Okay, in this very quick class, we'll look at the difference between quit and give up. Okay, so both of these verbs, of, well, verb and phrasal verb, are very similar. Um, and a lot of natives get them confused, and use them in the wrong context. So what is the difference? Well, one of these requires energy, it requires an input of energy, focus, discipline, and willpower. The other one is letting go of that energy, focus, discipline, and willpower. So we could say that, for example, when we want to quit something, we're trying to input all of our discipline. It's hard quitting something. It requires an input, like a constant input of your willpower. So vantage, the desire, the diligence, the ability, the focus, all of that, the dedication, compromiso, all of that. We're putting that energy in every day. So we always try to quit something bad. Always. It could be um, a bad habit. So we quit doing bad things. It could be um, eating too much salt. It could be eating salt. salt. Salt is fucked up, so sugar. It could be eating salt, eating sugar. It could be just eating too much in general. So um, maybe, for example, for most people, we'll say, I'm trying to quit uh, eating too much. Uh, maybe it's working too much. Maybe you're trying to quit uh, some other bad behaviors that people have is smoking, uh, drinking too much, um, worrying and thinking. You know, I'm trying to quit thinking about the future. It's a, a, it's a, a shitty and a difficult one that all adults do. Uh, when a child thinks about the future, when my, when my uh, nine-year-old son thinks about the future, the future is always awesome. It's either Christmas or his birthday. It's always taken fucking forever. So for him, he's just like, ah, when is it going to be my birthday? As an adult, when we think about the future, for him, it's excitement. That same energy turned upside down is anxiety. For us, the future is a black hole that we're being dragged towards. The future is turning 50, turning 60, turning 70, and we're scared to death of all the possible things that could go wrong in the world because we've read every article, we've saw every documentary, we watch every damn movie. We know how perilous and dangerous it all can be. When in reality, it's not. Our lives are just consistent and boring and the same thing happens. But we like to scare ourselves with the ideas of monsters and dinosaurs and pterodactyls hidden around every corner. And so thinking about the future is something that grown-ups do all the time. And, well, it's a habit because you can just stop, you know. Um, it, it, but it takes a great amount of effort. So we try to do something or you'll say, I am quitting this at the moment. But normally you're trying to quit. So to quit... It's always there's some bad habit or bad element in our life that we want to get rid of. So we're trying to quit doing that thing or we're trying to quit that thing. So once again, we can quit. If it's, a, if it's an action, I'll say I'm quitting shit, smoking. My, my verb, my action will always be the gerund. Um, so if I did in the past, and this is a true thing, I quit smoking uh, when I was 30. I'm pretty sure I was 30. So that was what, uh, fuck, 13 years ago. Yeah, I quit smoking 13 years ago. Um, and so there you go. So the verb, and then this is not a verb, just to keep things clear, this is an action. And an, as an action, it is a gerund. It's an object. Um, like, just to be this clear, when I say, for example, I like running, there's only one verb in the sentence, and the verb is like. Running is an object. And what's the difference between an object and a verb? Well, an object is not affected by time. When we look at our sentence structure here, and I'm getting off track, but fuck it, um, there is a, like a, a mirror or a piece of glass that separates the subject and the verb from the object itself. On this side of the mirror, everything is about time. Everything. And so the verb is kind of like water. So it can happen, I, you can say, for example, if we're looking at the verb run, we can say, well, I run 10 kilometers every day. 
and that's just a simple present. Uh, the future can be like any models of future. So I have to run tonight. Or for example, I'm going to run tomorrow. Or I'm running in the morning. Either way, uh, our verb now we think about in the future. I ran 10K yesterday. I've run 10K, ba 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 ba. Whatever it is, the, the verb can become the present, the future, the perfect, and so forth. But the verb is like water, and it's affected by time. It's always in motion. When the verb run goes over to this side here and becomes an object, it, it, it has to change because objects are like the, these tangible things that we have in our hands. And so um, how do you make an action something tangible? Well, you turn water into ice. And to make water into ice, you have to take running, run, sorry, and turn it into running. We can also have to run, the infinitive, which is another way to turn a verb into an object. But it must be clear, this is not a verb. This is an action. A verb is only a verb here. A verb is only a verb when it's in motion, when it's affected by time. The second it becomes an object, it is no longer a verb. And so, where the fuck did I see that? Hey, this here, smoking is not the verb. The verb would be, I smoke cigarettes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, or I used to smoke cigarettes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but in this case, smoking is not a, uh, a verb. It is uh, the noun. It is, well, it's the gerund, and it's our object. Uh, okay, uh, beautiful, so that's quit. Well, let's look at our next one. What's the other word we had here? We had give up was the other word as well. So to give up is different. To give up is, well, I mean, we're trying to quit something and then we're like, ah, you know what, fuck it. I can't, I don't want to anymore. So to give up is just letting go. You know, you try to change a habit. So we always give up doing something that's good for us. We quit something that's bad for us. We give up something that's good for us. Let me write that shit down here. Where the fuck am I? I get distracted sometimes and I talk to myself. We quit things that are bad for us. We give up normally things that are good for us. We give up because we don't have the focus. We don't have the diligence. We don't have the energy and we don't have the willpower anymore because maybe it's too difficult or we, we created unrealistic expectations. Here's something, uh, many times I get people coming to have English classes with me and they get excited. Like, I'm so, so excited to have this class and I tell them, no, I don't want you to be excited. That's the last thing you should be is excited. Because if you're excited to have this English class, it means the first day you're not excited, you're not gonna come to class. And then you're gonna think you can only come to class when you're excited. So then when you're having a day where you're stressed, you're anxious, you're depressed, you're tired, you're just feeling nothing at all, you don't come to class. And then eventually you quit, like you quit everything in your life. Everything that would be good for you, you quit because you said, I can only do this when I'm inspired. Anything you want to do in your life, any, any, if you want to study, some, learn something new, you want to learn to code, you want to get fit, you want to get healthy, you shouldn't feel excited or animated or, or even proud about this thing at all. You should feel ambivalent, you should feel nothing. So that means that, you know, even when you're excited, you can go and run 10K. Even when you're uh, frustrated, you can go and run 10K. Even when you're tired, you can go and run 10K. Even when you're depressed, you can go and run 10K. How I feel doesn't affect what I do. And the results or greatness is just the result of consistency. That's all that is. So for students, any, for me, my personal experience, Every student who comes to my interview excited is always the one that quits after the first couple of classes because they come in with this false expectations and if they don't feel that energy, they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. It doesn't do it for me. You shouldn't go into life with that expectation for anything, anything at all. Um, all right, so, and that's true, we give up. So by giving up, we just let go because we don't have, in this case, the excitement that we went in on the first lesson, or the diligence or the energy. So uh, let's look at personal ones. So, you know, me, the quitting things, the things that took effort, I quit smoking uh, when I was 30. My wife at that time was we just got pregnant with uh, my, my daughter, and um, uh, we both decided to go cold turkey. Here's an expression, cold turkey. 
cold turkey is where you just stop smoking. You know, you don't use patches, you don't do anything. I started the gym, became uh, at that point, and you know, went on a path of gym and Muay Thai and fucking obsession with uh, with self destruction and, and things like that. But um, uh, yeah, we, we we both quit smoking at that time because we wanted to our daughter to grow up in an environment that was uh, productive and wasn't cancer fun. Um, what else did I quit? Last year, I quit drinking. I did. Now, it must be known, the verb drink, on its own, as an intransitive verb, always means alcohol. If you want it to mean anything else, well, then you have to put the object in and make it a transitive verb. The verb drink is transitive and intransitive. As a transitive verb, you will name and you will use whatever, Coke, juice, water, milk. As an intransitive verb, it always means alcohol, always. Um, so I quit drinking um, last year after a very heavy mushroom experience. Uh, how do I spell experience? I took mushrooms in February last year in my house and it was a wild experience, it was. Normally I start my year every year with ayahuasca, um, which is a blessing, that stuff. And uh, it gets my mind in the right state for a year of, uh, of a lot of work, a lot of writing, um, and to be in the right headspace for, for everything. Uh, but uh, ayahuasca was all closed because of COVID. And so um, this country, Brazil being a beautiful country it is, I was able to buy some mushrooms through the mail and had mushrooms. And it was a horrific experience because I took way too many. Um, I really should have uh, done my research beforehand. Um, but there's no such thing as a bad experience uh, with mushrooms. Even a bad trip always changes you for the best. And as such, I did. The next day I quit alcohol. Um, and I haven't touched a drop of good wine or booze since uh, February 2021, which is a long time. So, uh, and as a result, my writing got better and everything else got better. Uh, so that's it. I quit drinking um, last year. And they're probably the two main things I quit. I don't think I quit doing anything else. Did I have any shitty behaviors that required, uh, uh, maybe I, I quit, obs yeah, I quit obsessing over the future and shit like that. That took a lot of effort, but yeah, that's the main ones. All right, so let's look at things I gave up. Uh, there's a whole bunch here because, fuck. So I gave up uh, Muay Thai uh, in 2020. I, I trained Muay Thai and I fought Muay Thai, but I trained for uh, about six or seven, seven years. It was a big part of my life. But after many injuries and uh, just, I, I was fucking tired and I wanted to be in a new environment. I wanted to try something new. So I swapped Muay Thai for yoga. Um, and the way I can explain that is uh, I, I miss the, the, the sudden violence of Muay Thai. I really do. Oh, I do. But Muay Thai is like uh, cutting down a tree with an axe. You know, these whoosh, these swift movements. Aish, aish, cutting down a tree and trying to cut down a forest, tree by tree by tree. Um, as far as strength and power goes, yoga is like um, a tsunami t tearing through that whole fucking forest. It's just this controlled power and force. It's, it's remarkable, very, very, very different. Um, and I'm not good at it. That's why I like it. I keep falling over. Uh, so I gave up Muay Thai in 2020. Uh, you could even say I quit because really I was emotionally connected to that place. They, they, those guys, they were all my family. You know, I trained there like uh, uh, for from 2017 until 2019. I trained like two to three times per day, five days per week. Um, I, I was an athlete at a certain point. And uh, it, it took a lot of... Uh, it was kind of emotionally difficult to walk away from that and, and to try to do something different. Um, you should do that as much as possible in your life, is walk away that, from that that you're emotionally connected to, uh, just as a practice, because at some point you're going to lose a lot of things in your life, including yourself. So it's good to build up that strength. Uh, what else did I quit? Give up, sorry. I gave up learning to code because it was just terrifically fucking boring. Um, I gave up studying French, uh, though I did learn just the one phrase, um, je, je suis chanois, <laughs> I'm a black cat, uh, which my black cat is able to say. And 
Just on a final one, this is what we're going to end up this class. I gave up trying to quit. That's it. And that's where we leave this class. As always, love the people who love you. Everybody else, well, they're just a piece of shit. See ya.